Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser. This video is part of a series on basic Java for programmers. So you already know some programming, just not Java yet. In this video we'll cover creating, uh, or using rather, array lists to store references to objects. Uh, an array list is similar to a vector in C++, where we can dynamically add and remove elements from it. I'm starting off where the previous video left off with a door class. The door class is just a data class that stores some information. It doesn't really matter what we store. In this case, we're just some basic pieces of information. So in my main uh, function, I want to first off create an array list. So I'm going to say, well, I could, I'll start off with this array list, and it's going to be an array list. In brackets, I specify what it is I wish to hold. And I'm going to say this is an array list of door objects. I'm going to call this one doors. Now at the moment, if I just left it as is, it's a null reference. It references nothing. I want it to actually reference an actual array list, not just that it could. So I'm going to say equals new array list, and I don't actually have to specify the type because Java can infer that. This is called the diamond operator. It can infer it from over here, so I don't need to repeat myself. So there's at least a good start, I'll say, as to what I'm doing. Now, as it turns out, one better thing to do is instead of creating this doors object to be actually an array list, I'm going to declare it as a list of doors, and its actual type is an array list. So I'm going to use polymorphism here. Um, that just makes my code a little bit more generic and helpful. Okay, so now I've got my array list of doors. Let's go ahead and add one. So I'm going to say doors dot add, and I can say new door, and I need to pass in. Uh, let's say this one's open, true, and it weighs one kilogram. And let's do it again. I'm going to add in a closed door, and let's imagine this is like a vault, and so it's going to weigh 42 tons. I got that right? There you go. 42 tons. Because that's in grams. Okay, so now I've got some items in my list. Uh, let's go ahead and access it. So the first thing I might want to do is access the first element. So I can do S out, and let's put this one first is, I'm going to call, this is going to be doors dot, and I can access any of these methods. Let's go do, I just want to say doors dot uh, get and get will allow me to access a specific element. Now I want to say get.0 because it's zero indexed. Let me control shift F10 this to run it. And we can see here that that is indeed my first door. Uh, another great one to do if something like, I'm going to do this up here, if doors dot is empty, a nice way to check, rather than checking the size explicitly, it can check this. I can do something like S out, no doors, no doors yet. So this is a nice way to, to access the, the properties of the door. Oh, pardon me, the doors. Okay, so now let's think about, well, the main power of this is accessing all the doors. So I'm going to add in a, another door here. Let's call this one is, oh, and let's make it really, really light door. So one gram just to keep it interesting. Let's access the last door in the system, so that, or the, in the series. So S out, and I want to get the last one. So last is, I'll line them up, doors.get, and I want to give it the index. So I could say, for example, doors.size, and it'll tell me how many elements are in the, the array list. Now this actually has a problem. Let me run it. I'll show you. Control shift F10, and we have an exception. And it says index out of bounds, exception. Index of three out of bounds for length three. We're zero indexed, so if you try to access index three of length three, it doesn't actually work. So standard fence post error, we're off by one. I need to shift F10 again, having corrected my length. And now we're getting the last element. So the first element and the last element I can access directly. Put a comment on that first and last. So. Uh, next thing we want to do is access them all. So let's go through and maybe um, let's go call a function. I'm going to call it print doors, and I'm going to pass in my doors object. Now I don't yet have this function, so I'm going to click on it and I'm going to go Alt Enter, and it gives me a few kind of hot fixes. I'm going to create the method print doors in main. 
Here it is. It's going to return nothing, so that's good. It's going to take in a list of doors. I'm going to call it doors. Um, again, the name of this variable can be anything I like. Doors is nice and descriptive. It just happens to match what I had before. That's okay. So only ever have a function print if it actually is named print, I find. Otherwise, pass something back. But we're calling this print, so let's do it all. I'm going to do this in two ways. I'm going to first do it with a for loop. And then I'm going to use the better way, which is a for each loop. So I'm going to say for int i is equal to 0, i is less than the stores.size i++. Plus plus. And then for each one, I'm going to say, let's go s out, and just print it out. Uh, why not door? And I'm going to put in an i here equals, and we're going to concatenate in Mm, doors dot get at i. Okay, let's run this. And this loop is going to walk through all of the doors that are defined inside of my um, array list. So door zero, one, two, and the information about each of those doors. We see that it's in order. Now this is with the for loop. A better way to access things anytime you can is to use the for each loop or also called it's the enhanced for loop. So rather than messing around with these indexes of i and so forth, I can simply say for each door. So for each door named d, I just call it door, why not? For each door in, in doors, uh, one person once mentioned to me that Java has a stuttering problem. So for each door, door in doors, do something. Let's s out, and I'm going to print out door equals, and we're just going to concatenate door. So in this case, this is going to loop through all elements in the variable doors. Doors is my list, a collection that is iterable. Uh, see the next tutorial on how to make your own collections iterable, or your own classes iterable. So this is an iterable collection, and it is iterable over a door object. And so I'm going to say, for each time through this, for each element in this collection, Give me a new reference to that element, and that's going to be this door object. And it's going to reference each of the objects in here. So let me run this. We can see we went through the list once in my for, my for loop. And then in my for each loop, I did it again. It goes in the same order. It just was a little bit easier to write. It's a little easier to code because I don't need this pesky index variable. So anytime you can, use a for each loop. There's one f limitation here, though, is that we've lost the i variable, which is great in most cases. Uh, say you want to count how many doors are heavy. You can do a for each loop. In fact, let's do that. So um, I can say int count of heavy is equal to 0 to start with. And I can say if door dot get uh, weight in grams is greater than, say, 2 kilos, I can say count of heavy plus plus s out num heavy doors is equal to count. So this might be something I'd often want to do. Kind of whip through for all of my elements, check something about them. I don't need to know what index it is, so don't bother creating one. Um, but of course, if I did want to match what I had before, I simply can't because here I was using the i variable. So it's a limitation on the for each loop. Um, it gets in the way only occasionally. Let's run this program. It'll tell me how many heavy doors we've got. And number of heavy doors is just one because the first one was one kilogram. This is my only heavy door. OK, so one last thing I want to show here is how we can kind of manipulate a, uh, an array list. Now, we can um, you can add and remove elements. Look up the data, the docs online for that. Let's create a new function. I'm gonna let's kind of write the code to use it, and then we'll actually implement it in a minute. So I'm gonna create a, a list. I'm gonna call a list of door objects, and I'm gonna call this one heavy doors is equal to. And here I want to say what am I gonna say? Um, let's create a new function. So let's call it uh, get heavy doors. And I'm going to pass in a collection of doors. So basically, I'm going to take in this one collection, and I'm going to, from it, create a second collection. So I'm going to click on the thing I have not yet defined, Alt-Enter, create it. And what do I want to do here? Well, 
I'm going to want to return a new array list. So I'm going to create one first. Array, actually just call it a list. A list of door objects, and I'm going to call this one heavy doors, equals a new array list. And I don't need to specify, oops, if I got that right, A R R A Y, there we go. So I create the new set of heavy doors, and then I'm going to return the heavy doors. So let's go through and add them all. So for, I'm going to use the for each loop, for door door indoors. If uh, door dot get weight is greater than, say, 2 kilograms as before, I'm going to add it to heavy door. Heavy doors dot add, and we're going to add in door. So we're just going to go through, apply a filter, basically. For every one that we select, we add it in to our new one. And once I've got this list here, uh, I've already got a thing, I can print doors. S out, oops, S out, heavy doors are, print doors. And I'm going to pass in the heavy doors. Uh, I'm going to go back and clean up my output down here for this. Let's comment out my for loop. And I'm going to comment out this, sure, leave the rest of that in. So now I'm going to test this function. It's going to call it, and I'm going to create a new thing called heavy doors. And I'm going to print it out once I've got it done. Run the code. As before, I've got my actual list of doors. And then I'm going to print out the heavy doors are, here are all just the heavy doors. Now an interesting thing to note is, what happens if I edit this? The second array list, this thing called heavy doors, is an array list that references the same objects. So both of my array lists are referencing the identical objects. Let me show you why. So the heavy door is currently closed. My heavy door is closed. Let's open that heavy door. So I'm going to say heavy doors dot get index zero dot set open, and it was false, I'm going to set it to true. This is sometimes called a uh, train wreck, because I got something dot something dot something. Yeah, for the moment, maybe it's okay. Um, and then I'm going to call print doors on all the doors. So s out all doors. And then let's print the heavy doors again. In fact, I'll do this down here. Yeah, why not? Heavy doors after open. After open. So all I've done is I've accessed via the heavy doors list the one door it has. Let me run this and show you what happens. So where we are here. Uh, so at this point, we opened one door. And we can see here the heavy door is now open. This door is our heavy door. And it's been set to open. And in both cases, it's the same. So this is showing us that when I created that new list, I'll show you here, and get heavy doors, this line of code is taking a reference to one door. And it's adding it into another list. So I still only have the same original set of objects. I'm just referencing those objects from two separate lists. All right. Thank you very much for watching. Um, in the following videos, we're going to talk a little bit about extending, taking some array list ideas, and moving into uh, model view separation, as well as making something iterable. If you like the video, uh, check out the video, other videos in the series, and go ahead and click subscribe. Thank you for watching.